Alright guys, Gunner here, and today I'm going to show you a variation on Jason Taylor's pheasant rump deceiver, and this time we're going to tie it swing style. Check it out. So this is a weightless pattern designed for your sink tips for two hand rods fishing down and across. Uh, obviously you can swing it on single hand rods and whatnot, but uh, it's ultra lightweight. There's no weight to it whatsoever except a little epoxy head. And then the whole fly, the keel of it, the, the direction that it rides, being hook point up, is all controlled with two sparse bucktail stabilizer wings. And the whole body, and this one's a little wet, so you have to forgive me, but the whole body is just dressed palmered pheasant rump. And this thing in the water, <coughs> it'll ride just about like that. Those wings will level out. They'll stabilize the fly. Literally, the, the kind of neutral buoyancy of the wing will pull up. The bucktail wings are tied right at the head, and that little tug up will control the keel of the hook, allowing this to ride hook point up, so that you can swing this right over bottom, right on bottom, um, and get as deep or as shallow as you want to fish it. Uh, so no hang-ups whatsoever. Uh, you can deep dredge it with a fast sinking tip, or fish it higher in the water column with something different. And it's unbelievably easy to roll cast with nothing except a little bit of water weight for this guy, and it's super fishy. So, let's do it. So the platform for this fly is going to be the Greg Sanyo Steelhead Articulated Shank from Flyman Fishing Company. It's 40 millimeters. Um, and then depending on the kind of hook gauge wire you like, I either run the NS182, which is a trailer hook in size 1 from A-Rex. That's a phenomenal hook, fits this pattern perfectly. Or you can run the Home Run trailer hook in a size 4. This one's a little bit thicker wire. I kind of like this one for smallmouth. This one a little bit more for trout. But the smallmouths, so I'm going to tie the in the size 4 home run trailer and if you look at the hook eye it's not like a true upturned hook eye and so I like to take a pair of pliers just grab that hook eye put a little bit more bend in that so that it runs straight back instead of being kind of pulled up and you'll see what I mean when I run my wire through it for wire we're gonna run Greg Sanyo's intruder trailer hook wire this is for size 6 or larger so it's going to be the heavier gauge wire, and all this is is just nylon coated multi-strand stainless steel wire. So you can use that as an alternative. I've had these same nippers in my office for like seven years. I think they're about ready to kick the bucket. Thread your wire through that hook eye. I'm sure most of this is not in frame. <laughs> Pull that tight, and you can see with that little bend in that hook eye, everything just rides perfectly true, just like that. So I'm going to come in with Danville's 210. This is a Flymaster Plus in white. The color does not matter. And I'm actually going to tie the fly with mono. 8,000 inch monofilament. But to get our stinger rig on there, I'm going to use my heavier thread here. Really cinch down that eye. Now you can tie the same fly in the shorter steelhead shank from Flyman, uh, but I kind of like to space out the pheasant rump. I think you get a, a lot better action out of it when you can space it out and build a nice long body. And so because we're going to use the longer shank, I'm going to use a nice short stinger, like maybe two inches on this. <laughs> two inches. Two inches too long. Maybe one inch on this. Sorry. Literally just pull that to about an inch right there. Lock that in place. Make sure push that down, pull that side up a little bit. And what you can see is, <clears throat> this is an R bend, so I have wire on top and bottom, and I run that wire, my, my steelhead wire, splitting that, that R bend perfectly, so it's 50-50 right there. Put some solid thread in the back, because that's where all the pressure from that fish being hooked is gonna be on there. And then I just kinda run that wire, nice and loosey-goosey, right up to the shank eye. I'm going to push that up and through, pull it back under tension and lock it down. And then come in with those doll nippers that I got and try to saw that off of there. Watch out for them R bends. Suckers are sharp. <clears throat> I 
And then I'm going to come in and coat all that with some super glue. And the most important part is right back here. Again, because when you hook that fish, that's where all the tugging and the pulling is going to go. And if you break some of those threads out, it's not going to go well for you. So make sure that's all reinforced and let that dry. And then we'll get her underway. So you can see, one inch short, nice little short stinger wire. Puts that hook right up into the top wing. And it makes for about a four inch fly. Which is really nice for, well, just about everything. <laughs> so yeah, that's your placement right there. So now that we got that locked in place, I'm going to come in. This is eight thousandths of an inch monofilament. You don't need to use mono to tie the whole fly, uh, but you need it to tie the head. For the way that we're going to do that epoxy head, we're literally going to tie these eyes in place. And so that clear mono, you can tie the eye in place. You can't see the thread. You get an unbelievably durable head. Uh, but this is a nice heavy gauge mono at eight thousandths of an inch. It just makes tying the fly and doing a little bit of bucktail work and detail work pretty easy. So I really like tying with it, and it's Vivas. But I'm going to come right back here <clears throat> to the bend, and basically the only thing you need to tie this fly at its simplest form is pheasant rump and bucktail. That's it. Now we're going to dress it up a little bit. We're going to add some peacock. We're going to add some wing and flash. We're going to add some flash of dubbing. Um, so that we can kind of make a really nice, ultra-realistic, fine-tuned fish catching machine. Uh, but all you really need is pheasant rump. Now, if you can find a rump patch, these are just exceptional for doing this because the pheasant skin is your other option, and this just has a lot more waste for what we're going to use because we're basically going to use only the rump patch. So, one or the other. <clears throat> and what you want to do is if you look at the silhouette of this fly, and again, the feathers are wet on this because I ran it under my sink, but we're going to use long feathers in the back, long feather in the middle, slightly shorter feathers, slightly shorter feathers at the head. So the tips of this make a nice clean silhouette when they're all wet and moving in the water. So you're going to start long and go short. And the way I like to handle this, you pick one out, and if you just hold it up and kind of flick it, you see it bends right here. And that's where the shaft gets a little stiff. Cut that out. Preen it. I'm going to tie that empty shaft right on top of my hook. And my, my thread went from the front to the back. I'm going to go from the back to the front. And so now I've put a figure eight on it. I'm going to take my thread forward. And then I'm going to wrap my thread back. So now I have that hackle locked in. My thread went forward and back so it couldn't loosen up. And that's secured nice and tight, and I'm going to be able to turn this just the way I want. So make sure you got that angled right, so all the feathers are concave back, meaning their curvature is going to fold back on you. And then we're just going to lightly dress that. Nice tight wraps right on top of each other. Come up and catch it, and then if you catch it right at the top, you don't have to break that stem out, you can just leave it in there. And make sure, once you catch that feather, that you put some thread wraps backwards so that that stem is covered in tying thread. And if you get a tooth on it, it's not going to break out. <coughs> then I'm going to come in with some wing and flash. And this is just a shredded mylar, ultra length, great action in the water, and this is dark brown. And if you've seen some of my videos recently, you know I've been favoring these tannic kind of coffee colored flies. It matches my water conditions perfectly. So I just tease out a little bit and I'm going to cut that in half. I want a nice little short stack here to help build our taper. And I'll show you what I mean as we progress throughout the fly. Now I drape that around my thread, bring it up right on top, fold it over itself so it's kind of tied in twice and then I'll use my thumbnail. That's what I like to use. And it just kind of fans it out. So you take your tying thread and you just kind of crunch it with your, with your thumbnail. And all the material trapped under it spreads out. You get a nice little veil of flash right on top of that feather. And it's just short. It goes right to the hook. And so as we build this fly, <coughs> I'll show you what's going to happen here. Because the fly doesn't ride level in the water with those stabilizer wings and that upturned hook eye. It rides like this. Right? It doesn't ride level. It rides like this. So we're going to add that flash and that wing so that silhouette drapes up. The silhouette drapes up. So everything that we're going to build is going to go 
long, longer, longest, a little bit long. So it's like you have to change your orientation here. Come in with some super glue and weld all that together. Now what I like to do to get some volume out of these pheasant rope feathers, hit your thread with some wax, <clears throat> then I'm going to come in with some flashy dubbing. And again, this is a shredded mylar, and this one's cut nice and short. You do not need a lot for this first one. And I just take that and just mash it onto that wax. And you're just looking to create just basically a little intruder bump. That's all you're doing. It doesn't need to be crazy. Now, once you finish the fly, you can tease this out. Or you can just let fish teeth do it. It doesn't matter either way. Come in with another long pheasant rump feather. You just flick it. You'll see it bend right there. That's how you know where to cut it. Bring it. Take that butt end. Lock it on top right there. Figure eight. Bring that thread forward and back so it's locked in place. And start to turn. And again, if you catch that stem right on the top, I don't break it out if I catch it right on the top. And then I'll just tie over that for durability. You're just building a nice little stationed fly here. Tease out a little bit more wing and flash. And you can see that teases out pretty long. Those raw fibers are about 8 inches. I don't need them that long. Cut them in half. Put some finger taper into it. Everything that you tie in should have just a little bit of taper to it. No straight edges here. Bring that right to the top. You can bring your thread over it. And then smash that with your thumbnail. And you'll get a nice little veil of those materials. <clears throat> and you can see I'm just kind of generally breaking the shank into fourths. One, two, three, four. I'm just going to have four little micro stations here. You don't want to crowd the hook eye too much or else you're going to get slippery with your bucktail work and ruin everything. So make sure you just split it into quarters. You'll be all right. And I'm just going to come in with another pinch here. A flash of your belly. Now my pheasant rump is going to get just a wee bit shorter. Start building that belly taper. And now that you guys know how to print it, we'll just kind of blow through this for a sec. Now that's looking a little sparse, but it's totally okay because you have to remember the actual fly is up here. All this is just belly movement and flickering and stuff like that. Now I'm going to come in with my first of two bucktail sta stabilizer wings. We're going to tie one right here on top of this stack and one right at the hook eye. And what I like to do is I just like to use an accent color for the first one because it's that underwing. So you can use like if you want to create like a, a black line that you might have on like a darter or something like that you can tie in a little black bucktail. I like to use orange because it fits really well with the stain of my water. <coughs> now if you use your bucktail way down here tends to have a lot of trapped air and it'll flare up on you too much. This kind of third section right here, a little bit up from the base where it attaches to the deer, you're typically going to find your longest, nicest fibers for doing this. Just a little bit of flare, good compression, good length. Now this tail is not like the world's most exceptional bucktail that you ever found. It's just nice three and a half, maybe four inch fibers, right? Because we're going to make a four inch fly. So you, you can find this stuff at any fly shop here. And I'm going to cut that nice and clean. I printed out the, all the under fur of the hair. I'll go over that on the next stack. I realized I kind of missed that. I'm just going to catch that right on top. Add some serious thread pressure. You can veil it out a little bit so it domes the back. But for the most part, you're just going to keep it right on top. Lock that in place. And then if you want, you can relax. So I'm going to draw out thread so I can tie with less pressure. You can just collapse that just a little bit so that it looks pretty. <clears throat> and I'm going to keep adding my wing and flash throughout the fly. So there's flash throughout the whole fly. 
but I'm not going to cut it in half anymore because I'm increasing the length of it as we go up onto this wing here. Just veil that with my thumbnail. And then, right on top of this stack, we're going to come in with some peacock curl. And peacock curl is super natural. It fits with the, the whole color scheme of the fly beautifully. It also reflects light at the top of that fly and really mimics the dark back of just about every natural bait fish on the planet. I love this stuff for a wing material. Now you can go sparser heavy. I like to use probably 10, 10 hurls in each stack. So we're going to do this uh, over wing right here over this bucktail and then we're going to do another one as the finished fly. I treat that just like the bucktail. Cut it vertical, bring it up onto that bucktail stack. You can fan it out a little bit so it's got some three dimension to it and then tie her down. If you have a little extra room feel free to come in with another little bunch of dubbing but you don't need it at this point. And now we're going to come in with two short hackles and I want to use two and it's not the shortest of the short if you come way down here these tend to be a little short. They're right up here in kind of the midsection of the rump patch. And we're going to use two of them so we get a nice kind of dense throat patch and trying to figure out your hackles way up here at the hook eye with two feathers is kind of a pain so I just take these guys and just try to get them on there and wrap them down nice and tight so I'll kind of throw technique to the window there and just worry about getting them tied in make sure you can find both stems and what you're looking for is one nice, clean, full turn. That's why we doubled up our hackles here. Well, maybe I'm going to let that come all the way around. Tie that off. Now this is where things can get a little bit tricky. If you're kind of a beginner tire because um, you want to be really accurate with your thread tension right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in with our final bucktail wing. You want it to be fairly long, the full length of that fly, but it doesn't need to be super dense. So it can be nice and sparse still. You can see that it's not a lot of hair. You don't need a lot of hair between the two wings to stabilize it. It's going to run the full length of the back just a little bit past the hook here. I'm going to cut this nice and vertical so I can get a very clean catch on it. Pinch that right up on the hook eye. Come down with that thread. and Make sure I like the placement. Now, you don't have to be crazy <coughs> about making this clean because we're going to hide this with eyes and epoxy here. So what I'm going to come in with one more sack of wing and flash. So we got this nice dark, dark brown wing and flash throughout the whole fly here. Bring that right on top of that bucktail wing. Smash my thread or my thumb into it. Get a nice little veil on it. And then I'm going to come in with some long peacock curl. I like that length. Cut it nice and clean. Stack it right on top again. You can fan that out. And we've made this big, ugly looking thread bump. On a normal fly, that would be gross. <laughs> but we're going to clean this up with some eyes and epoxy, and it's going to look mint. And this big kind of stack of bucktail we have makes for a perfect place to tie in an eye. So I'm going to come in with sticker eyes. <clears throat> These are Mirage eyes from Headround Inc. So the guys who make Flashaboo. And these are 3 sixteenths of an inch, so not super big. And they're just two-dimensional little sticker eyes. Print them off that packaging. Lay it nice and flat right here on the head. Come in with the thread turn. Lock that in place. Can't see anything because my mono thread is clear. 
pin one on the other side here. Tie that in place. And then I'm going to drop my thread back down to the hook eye. Give that just a quick little two turn whip finish. Alright, now I brought my vise down level, got my shank in there so that as I rotate this, my hook eye is not on an odd angle. That way I don't have any like weird sagging or dripping. Now, <clears throat> if you are a UV resin guy, you have it at home, you got the tools, you've already made that investment, I like to just come in with a UV uh, Diamond Fine Flex. This is a Deer Creek product. Works absolutely phenomenal well for doing this quick little head. If you don't have that stuff, you don't need it. Uh, so this is something that I always like to kind of encourage, but before you get into UV resin tying, learn how to use 5-minute epoxy. The disadvantage is that it yellows over time, and it takes more time to set up. That's about it, right? So this costs like $3. <laughs> so what you come in with, you just want a 50-50 ratio of this stuff. So you have a resin and you have a hardener. You mix the two in equal portions, 50-50. Mix it slow so you don't get any air bubbles. The five minute set time is more of a guideline than anything. It depends a lot on your temperature and humidity. A lot of times mine will take maybe seven or eight minutes before it kind of sets up because I'm in my basement and it's cold and not as it well, it's northern Minnesota right now and it's winter so it's pretty dry. <laughs> but you just use an old spare bodkin and mix it and mix it thoroughly. You don't need five minutes to apply this stuff. Spend two minutes mixing it, right? Because you don't need all five minutes. Don't be in a hurry. You want that stuff mixed thoroughly to get a proper set. So just take your time. So you just take a good little dollop, get it right there on the eye, get it down under your tying threads up in here. Gonna take a little bigger one, move it onto the other side. And you're just gonna build basically a bomb proof head with those eyes tied in place. Nice clean, low profile. A little bit of weight. You'll see the epoxy gives some life to those 2D sticker eyes because you're creating a three dimensional dome over the top of them. Helps make them look a little bit more realistic. And usually that's about all you need. Might come in with just a little bit more. And for this you do want a rotary vise. You don't technically need one. You could hold this in your hand and rotate it like this but it would be a pain to try to do. So a little bit of forewarning. That might be one of those scenarios where if you don't have rotary you might pay to invest in some UV work there. And then you just sit here and slowly rotate it and check your email or Instagram feed or do something like that. So, yeah. So while we're hanging out here and waiting for this to dry, uh, I got all this stuff in my online store. So I try to carry stuff for just specific patterns that use a lot of the same material. So you have the Chosen One series and then the Pheasant Rump series. You have Pheasant Rump Bait Fist, Pheasant Rump Muddler, you got a little Crawdad pattern, you got the Four Way Chronicles, like they all use just pheasant. And so I'm gonna have the shanks, the hooks, you can get uh, <coughs> full pheasant skins, I got the ostrich, I got the flashy boo dubbing, the eyes, basically everything you need. Um, so check that out. And then if you want to see this fly fishing, if you want to see it in a fishing context, I will probably post a separate video. Maybe I'll put it at the end of this. We'll have to see how long the tutorial is. <coughs> but if it's not at the end of this, then I'll have a link or a little card that takes you to another video so you can see this guy sticking some smallmouth and actually a bunch of walleye. And that's something I want to talk about at the end of this while this is drying. Swinging flies is not something I've really done before, truly. Like, it's, it's not something I've, I've truly invested in as a fisherman. And this year was kind of the first year. Uh, I'm going to leave that up. I, I don't like the way those the peacock curl will lay down once I get it wet. <coughs> I don't want to destroy any of that volume. But swinging flies isn't something that I, I usually do. Um, and this year I bought a switch rod, an 11 foot 6 weight imperial switch, uh, 
and I freaking fell in love with that thing. That thing is unbelievably fun to fish. And the fact that I can make a 60 foot roll cast like that and cover so much more water and my river structure is very classic like riffle run pool and those runs hold walleye and smallmouth like the big ones <laughs> not big walleyes i caught a bunch of small walleyes but that's what i want to get to um so this presentation that i don't normally do uh i started catching walleyes like i caught like three three walleyes in one afternoon out of a run that i have fished 15 times never once caught a walleye in it i usually average like three maybe four smallmouth out of this run that eat nice bait fish patterns never once moved a walleye switched up to a swing pattern dredged it nice and deep walleyes back to back to back i was blown away and so um it was really fun to me because trying something new also led to a new discovery total multi-species approach I uh, started catching more fish because I was working runs more thoroughly and just slower and more methodical and finding the ledges and uh, if you like swinging flies, I understand most of the people who watch this video and get this far, they probably swing flies and they know what I'm talking about, um, but it's crazy fun and crazy effective. I've always held the kind of Kelly Gallup mentality that you want it to run head first downstream, you want to move it fast, like a fish reacting to a tail first presentation isn't ideal it's not truly like predatory you wouldn't come up and eat something from behind you'd eat it at first but mm, the results that i got are very different from that um smallmouth walleye absolutely inhale this thing on a swung retrieve so it's definitely going to be something to see a lot more of um and that switch rod it fits my river better than any single hand rod i've ever fished for a weight fishing tool i think a switch rod is about the coolest thing you could do so uh check that out watch that fishing video i'm fishing that 11 foot six weight switch imperial from st croix i got a 400 grain skagit max short 10 foot mow tips the t uh, i use t8 i use a light tip so i have T8 with a 5 foot sink tip and a 5 foot float and that one's kind of my favorite and then I use a full 10 foot so you only really need those two tips to cover most of your fishing scenarios for a kind of weightable river. Unbelievably fun. So <clears throat> what we're going to do here at the end of this video if you made it this far we're going to put this guy in the flyman fish tank so you can see it swim you can see how it'll dip back the stabilizer wings will control the keel you get an excellent movement out of the whole fly. You get all that little flash and the feathers and the tips of the bucktail at the back. It's a swimming machine. So check it out and thanks for watching. Boom. Look at that thing. It wants to ride truer than true, man. So this is with the tank super duper slow. Speed it up a little bit. This would be like a nice fast run here. No matter what you do to it, it's always going to ride true because of those stabilizer wings. So all the current down here is not all uniform. It's more most uniform like right in this layer, but you obviously don't want it in the surface or else it you get weird little air pockets and it sticks to the surface tension on the top. Right, we'll stick her down in the tube and slow her down a sec. Gotta film something for the IG.